Park is an adventure game set in, rather handily, the town of Thimbleweed Park. It's the brainchild of LucasArts alumni Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick, and follows faithfully in the footsteps of the games they helped to develop there. Games like The Cave, Maniac Mansion, Death's Bank, and of course, the Monkey Island series. Despite all I'm about to say about this game, it's one I fully recommend to everybody. Not just the point and click fans who enjoy an at times well written, sometimes funny game with a decently paced narrative that never gets bogged down too much. Another game I'd recommend alongside this is Broken Age, which straightens out a lot of the flaws of Thimbleweed Park with superior voice acting, along with a better storyline and a far better art style. However, they both suffer from a lot of similar flaws, in that both games have an absolutely dire second half. So look, go get it, and there will be spoilers galore from this point on. I mentioned the voice acting earlier and I'll continue with it because it's the first major flaw in the game. In a game like this where your art style isn't detailed enough or has the resolution to convey the character's emotions through facial expressions, you really do live and die by your voice acting and it's almost criminally monotonous throughout the game. So tell me again why you're here. I was assigned to the case by the home office in Albuquerque. There is no home office in Albuquerque. It's neat to know. Look, I like working a case alone. I especially don't need some junior agent messing up my investigation. Especially some junior agent that thinks this I don't... This is contrasted by the voice acting for all the auxiliary characters being quite good. It really shows up how poor the main character's voice acting is. There's no real inflections to any of the voices and their tones never shift regardless of what's going on about them, whether they're being kidnapped, getting sick from food poisoning or reacting to the news that their father is dead in a conversation with his ghost. It's all the same dull level monotone. You initially take control of two FBI agents, Ray and Reyes, as they arrive in Thimbleweed Park, which is portrayed as a backwards rundown town built around an absurdly advanced vacuum tube based pillow factory which was born to the ground. The game tosses the intrigue right at the start with a statement that Reyes is accused of lying by his claim to be from a head office that doesn't exist. Despite this, it's never referenced again and it seems not even to bother Ray, especially when her own secret motives are alluded to later. This sort of thing cropped up an awful lot in Thimbleweed Park. Motivations and points are conjured up and then discarded just as quickly with no effect. One of the main culprits is the chief comic relief character Ransom the Clown. He supposedly joins in a murder investigation in order to clear his own name, but none of his story arc has anything to do with the investigation. He never references the fact that he was considered a suspect, and later on when the murder is supposedly solved, he never says or mentions anything about the fact that he's just been cleared of murder. His ending doesn't even cover it instead choosing the flashback to the night he was initially cursed to be a clown forever. In, fa in fact, the entire character of Ransom could be struck out of the game and nothing different would happen, other than you'd have to get somebody else to climb that fucking radio tower. Which leads me to the second major flaw of the game, the story. It really runs out of steam towards the end. But mostly, the murder is never actually fucking solved! about murder, sir. Ignore him. He's new. No sense in wasting everyone's time, Reno. This cutscene is starting to get long, and it's only gonna get longer. Let's find the coroner and uh, get you on your way. Wrestling starts at 8. I hope he's talking about on TV. Yes, the murder, the main initial plot driver, or so we're led to believe, of the story is never solved. All you get is the heavy inference that Willie was framed, and even then, that isn't clear. I mean, you find the murder weapon in his hovel in the sewer, his fingerprints are on it, you know he was at the scene of the murder on the night, and he has the victim's blood-soaked wallet on him. I mean, if he didn't do it, who did? The sheriff's dodgy behaviour is all set up to suggest that he had something to do with the murder, but that doesn't make sense even by the game's own loose logic. If you run with the theory that he murdered Boris, or at least he knows who did and is covering up for them, to prevent him from investing in the pillow factory, then why leave his body out in the open? Why does he state that the sooner the FBI investigation into the murder is completed the better and then actively hinder it at every opportunity? This makes even less sense if you run with the added theory that it was the sheriff who framed Willie. If he set him up so perfectly, 
why not let the agents find out all of that as fast as possible so they can piss off as fast as possible? On that note, why isn't the sheriff a bit more concerned about the fact two federal agents have shown up to investigate a murder that he never told them about? It's this scenario that shows how little thought was put into some of the characters' full arcs. I've listened to a podcast with Ron Gilbert and he said that what people are calling plot holes aren't plot holes at all, people looking for hard answers when there's only interesting metaphorical ones. And I don't buy this for a second. The Ray Reyes partnership is a good case study here as there's no answer to their situation that makes any kind of sense, metaphorically or otherwise. If you assume that they're both agents or that only Ray is, then why does she state that the office Reyes claims to be from doesn't exist and then continue to work with him? Interesting point here, there is an FBI head office in Albuquerque. If Reyes is an agent, why would he not refute that? Why would Reyes openly state Willie is innocent, there's even an option to release him at the end, but not investigate the murder any further than that? Why don't they take more interest in the potential framing angle as it's made very obvious Willie was framed? I mean, even the fucking bank manager knows Willie didn't do it despite all of the evidence pointing to him. And if you run the end game assumption that neither of them are FBI agents, then the whole murder investigation doesn't make any sense at all. If the investigation is a cover for the agents to poke around, why bother solving it as fast as they do? In fact, why bother solving it at all? When they lock Willie up for it, they both leave town only to come straight fucking back for their real objectives. I wonder what was the point? Why would they place such a heavy emphasis on the investigation, only to just discard it and its consequences so easily. There's a frustrating lack of logic to any of the characters' actions. I mean, why do all these people start working together? I get the tenuous Ray and Reyes reasons, the murder, but after all this, the story starts to fall apart quite rapidly. In the end, the designers just abandoned any pretense of a shared goal for the characters other than get into the factory and then get out of the factory. This really falls flat with regards to Ransom and Dolores. She's openly hostile towards Ransom throughout the entire game and will even throw him out of her house should he attempt to enter it, yet helps him with many of his puzzles despite their story arcs never crossing at all and having zero impact on one another. As for Ransom's curse, if the witch couldn't take being insulted to the point that she would permanently disfigure another person, why did she go to a show where the main act was a clown that insults people? I mean, she even sat up the fucking front! With regards to Boris's death, what sane investor meets a client, alone, by the banks of a river, at night, out in the middle of nowhere, with instructions to make sure that they weren't followed without asking at least some questions? As for the ending, I won't spend too much time on it as it's tailor-made to divide opinion. When I got to the ending, my main overriding thought was, seriously? You went with that ending? And if you've played Monkey Island 2, you would add, again? Let me just qualify this by stating I don't have any inherent problem with the whole none of it is real, it's all just a dream, he was in the shower the whole time kind of ending. But it really does require you to have all of your plotline ducks in a row come the end game and to make sure that while not having everything tied up in a neat little package, you don't have too many plot gaps or extraneous devices poking holes in the veneer you're trying to pull down. A key point to this style of ending is that the viewer or gamer should be able to look back on prior obscure details and see how they make sense in light of the ending. The ending should never make the whole build-up feel nonsensical or meaningless. Which is what I feel the ending in Thimbleweed Park does. All of the previous discoveries that lead to the ending are simply flapped away with a it's all just a game, none of it's real, forget about it lion. Plus there's no satisfying denouement to any of the character stories. They're all just given the thing they need or were looking for right at the end, Wizard of Oz style, without having to work for it at all. Reyes doesn't have the work to prove his father's innocence or solve any clues or puzzles to prove that it wasn't him who started the fire that killed him. He's just fucking handed a signed confession. A signed confession, by the way, that he takes totally for granted despite the fact that it's been given to him by a man who's uploaded his mind into a vacuum tube operated supercomputer and has been displaying a somewhat less than solid grip on sanity over the course of the game. Ray's ending is actually particularly stupid as she was sent in to obtain the factory AI using a key you're just mailed and told to use at the start of the game. You obtain a puzzle dependency chart and then she just dematerializes out of the game. Yep, that's it. Poof. This is a shame as out of all of the endings, Ray is the only character that seems to exhibit any kind of fear at just being resetted along with the town. I think it would have been a really good angle to explore as she attempts to flee the town or actively prevent Dolores from pushing the final tube. Instead, they just have her talk to a voice off screen, one that you've only heard once before, and then she just beams out of the game. 
Ransom is given a card that he could have picked up at a far earlier stage in the game and has to give to somebody who is wronged gravely in order to make amends. It's this ending that makes really no fucking sense. You're, give, you're given a sorry for being a jerk card to give to somebody that you're a jerk to. That's the old woman that cursed them, the one who insulted them, yeah? Wrong. It's the girl in the diner, and if you're eagle-eyed enough, you'll realise it's the girl from Maniac Mansion, whom he barely insults in the game and isn't even mentioned in the flashback at all. That's who he then gets the ability to replay his very first insult scene, and you have the option to redo it and be nice to everybody, despite the fact that it runs totally contrary to his character. This is something that he shows absolutely no desire to do throughout the game and is in fact marked out by his total lack of conscience about how he's acted. Frank goes into the afterlife after saying goodbye to his daughter in a scene with all the emotional impact of watching a dog dragging its arse across the carpet. Again, the voice acting really lets the game down here. Dolores' ending, which is the game's canon ending, sees her progress through the game in its alpha build stage before finally deactivating the central computer and resetting the supposed simulation. She's talked into this by her uncle through his references to the game's sparse environment and characters and the lack of any backstory she has, which falls flat a few times. In particular, he asks her if she remembers going to school, and she replies with no, yet I distinctly remember her referring going to school with at least three of the other characters that she runs into. He also references the lack of children in the town and asks where are they, despite the fact that the game takes place at night in the aftermath of a brutal unsolved murder with a killer at large, not exactly a child safe situation. Again, the whole concept of it's all in the Matrix ending isn't something I inherently disagree with, and it's not something I'll get into any further, but it just didn't work for me here due to the rather rushed finales dished out to every character and the plot holes left behind that aren't satisfied with it, it's just a game ending. The sheer amount of loose ends that aren't explained are mind bending, which include, but are not limited to, and in no particular order. Who actually killed Frank? I mean, he knew his attacker, and it's certain that Chuck organised it, but who actually did it? At that point in the story, Chuck was well in the process of going full lawnmower man. Who the fuck were those shadow assassin looking things? Also, what was up with the more cutscenes? It's never referenced except in the characters' own notebooks that they seem to just have blacked out. Also, why are they so okay with just blacking out? Why did the characters seem so remarkably cool about being attacked by a shadowy mass, kidnapped, and then dumped in a sewer? A lot of these threads are left dangling at the end and actually wind up spoiling the game experience for me quite a bit. I do enjoy films, games, etc. that leave me with stuff to ponder afterwards. Maybe stuff I'll realise more about on another watch or on a playthrough or if I think about it a bit more. But I don't think I'll learn or experience anything new or differently with another playthrough of Thimbleweed Park. The loose ends don't seem like discussion points. They're more like loose threads of a rushed ending. In conclusion, while I've spent the majority of this video pointing out the game's flaws and my review won't be considered great by some, I will be recommending this game to everyone I meet who hasn't played it. I found it to be a quirky, funny and somewhat surreal game. The writing is very well done at times, it keeps moving and is generally of a high enough standard and the town itself and some of its inhabitants are dense enough for you to be able to spend a good deal of time really getting to explore what there is in depth. The artwork is also spot on, in particular the incredible 8-bit artwork done by artist Mark Ferrari which is an absolute joy to look at. None of the puzzles approach typical moon logic and nearly all can be solved with just a bit of thought and some time. The game has a dark-ish tone throughout and the first half in particular is really good and when the game clicks, it really works. The unfortunate part is, is that it doesn't click very often. Its downsides are the poor voice acting on the main characters, numerous plot holes, poor logic and a lack of focus towards the end. Also the plethora of fourth wall breaking jokes ensures that the game has zero immersion of any kind. They didn't bother me much over the course of the game, I found most of them quite funny, but it got on so many people's nerves that they patched in an option to switch them off in the game. The ending will turn a lot of people off, but my main concern is that it's going to be used as a high horse for people to saddle up on in forums or in discussions to look down on anyone who wasn't satisfied or was annoyed by it as not getting it or wanting to be spoon fed. While this is in no way a bad game at all, it is in no way deserving of the barrage of 5 star and 90 plus percent reviews that have been tossed at it over the past few months. This is not a perfect game. This is not a 4 or a 5 star game and it's not a 9 or a 10 out of 10 game. It's an above average game. Just go to the middle of whatever scale it is you're using and give it a little kick towards the top end and you're about right.
My only hope is that the mistakes made in this game will not be repeated in Ron Gilbert's next game because his is a voice that is sorely lacking in this current era of gaming and adventure gaming is something that should always be encouraged. Those are my thoughts on it, so please feel free to leave your surely well-articulated and coherent comments below if you agreed or if you didn't.